Um, okay, so thank you guys so much for hopping on tonight. Tonight's call is going to be really awesome. It's guest hosted um, by both Christine and Dakota, who both hit diamond uh, in October. Yay! So um, they were able to qualify for the diamond retreat, and they pushed really, really hard. They did not just get lucky and become diamond. They worked their butts off. So um, they are both going to kind of talk to us tonight about, you know, what – um, they did to get diamond. Um, maybe if there was any aha moments or what changed or, you know, little things like that for them, um, about, you know, what kind of really put the plan in motion, um, and tips for you guys on doing the same thing, because, um, honestly, you know, anybody can, can do this business. It takes, a, uh, it takes some hustle. It takes some heart, but if you want it, you can do it. And so, um, you know, these girls are absolutely amazing, but we still don't want you to, you know, put anybody else on a pedestal because we can all, we all have the same talents. We all have the same gifts. Um, well, I mean, it's, I mean, that's not totally true, but we all have the ability, <laughs> um, to, um, you know, reach our goals. So um, we also wanted to make an announcement that we have decided to extend the deadline for um, qualifying for our diamond retreat until December 31st. So the um, Christine and Dakota will um, get a little extra something special because they did in fact hit it by the original um, deadline, but we are going to extend it. So that means you get to work your butt off and make it happen. So if you have to hit diamond by December 31st and hold it for six weeks, to make that happen. So that's like freaking huge. That it gives you, it's literally November 3rd. So, um, and if you have, if your upline coach is pushing, you know, for two stars, pushing for, um, you know, a promotion, the 23rd of November is a date that's really gonna help them. So um, yes, we're giving you December 31st, but kind of have it in your head that I will be diamond by 11, you know, 23, because that's going to really help um, anybody that's pushing to be um, a star diamond team officially by the end of the year, because you have to hold it for six weeks. So it's important to not just focus on hitting diamond and then take your foot off the gas. It has to be something that you're pushing, you're going to get there and you're not going to just stop once you hit diamond. It's kind of diamond ever after that you're continuing to push, you know, you're continuing to build your team um, because your coaches aren't going to all stay active. You're not going to miraculously stay diamond. I wish I could tell you that that was the case. It's not. You're going to have people quit. You're going to have people not order their shakes next month. You have to continuously add or you're going to lose that rank. So it's really, really important to not just say, oh, I did it. Celebrate myself. Oh, that was a rough ride. I don't have to do that anymore. And so you need to just continue to do the, the vital behaviors every day. Um, all right. So, um, Dakota started as a coach in June, um, and so she's, you know, living in Minnesota. She's from Wisconsin. She uh, works full-time as a fitness coordinator um, and basically oversees a, a fitness center. So um, she's definitely, you know, walks the walk, talks the talk. Um, I believe she found uh, Tanner on Instagram, and I remember when she first signed up, I was like, who is this girl? <laughs> um, because she, you know, signed up and um, – you hit like success club 12 your first month or, you know, something crazy like that. <laughs> so, um, you know, she was just really, really gun ho from the very beginning. Um, and she's a fur mama. And so, uh, then Christine, uh, has been a coach for about eight months and she's a single mama to her little two year old, um, that's joining us on the call. I'm sure. She'll teach us a few things tonight too. Um, she's a nurse and, um, yeah, she is, uh, so she is Sarah's coach, and um, Dakota is Tanner's coach. So um, right now, Tanner is qualifying for two-star and pushing for Premier uh, for their team. Yay! And uh, Sarah is one-star qualifying, um, really, really pushing to be two-star, to be a, um, ending the year two-star and be able to be eligible um, for a new leader conference. Um, who else? We have um, Angela Camello is one star qualifying. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, um, so some big things coming for our team. Um, we've got Debbie Potter, uh, and Danielle Rhodes that are one star. And, um, 
think that's, yeah. So that was kind of my really big goal this year was to end the year with building some star diamonds for people building their team. And uh, it's really cool to see that happening and unfolding. So I am going to give it away to Christine and I will shut up and please get out your notebooks, take notes. And um, before we hop off this call, we probably want to do a screenshot. Do you guys want to do a screenshot now? Let's do one now since we have, can you guys like show your faces? <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a hot mess, just show your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Jamie, Kristen, Alex, and 724630. Oh, you called in so you can't show your face, but <laughs> Jamie, Kristen, and Alex, I'm paging you to show your face. <gasps> Krista. I don't have to. <laughs> you have to. Oh, Kristen, I thought you were naked. I was like, oh. <laughs> But you're not. Come back. Come back. Okay. We've got Krista. Yay. Oh, I'm so excited. You jumped on the call. Okay, Alex, I'm waiting on you, girlfriend. Come on. You can do it. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So does anybody have wine? Does anybody have wine? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Danielle is the only one with wine. I have ginger ale. I can't do wine this week. Okay. Well, I'm pregnant. I actually did pour a glass of wine though because I've tried to have one like five times and I get one sip and I have heartburn. So I actually do, but I'm not going to pose with that. So, all right. Um, big smile. Kristen, come back. Jamie, what is happening? <laughs> Can we get it together? Okay. All right. I'm giving you five seconds. Jamie and Kristen. Okay, we're going to do it without them. So um, I'm going to take a screenshot and then I can share it with you. If you have a Mac, a, a good tip is Control Shift 4 will make a box around it. And, or sorry, Command Shift 4, you can make a box and, and choose. And Command Shift 3 will just screen, um, do the whole screen. So, all right, smile, everyone. One, two, yay. Okay, got it. So, um, sorry, go ahead, Christine. I will share this in our page if anybody wants to make a fun post about it. Okay, so I'm going to um, share my screen. Okay. Okay, so I am, April gave a great introduction, so thank you, April. Um, so I'm just going to go right into my tips. So how I've kind of laid this out is sort of, I've separated it into the different things. I've kind of been thinking the past week of like everything that I did this, this month in order to push for diamond and to hit diamond. So I've kind of separated that out and we'll go along and just stop me at any time if anybody has any questions. So the first thing when I thought of what did I do um, to hit diamond is the power of positive thinking. So I set the goal and the goal was diamond by October 31st, no excuses. So I didn't say I wanna be diamond by October 31st, I said, I'm going to be diamond by October 31st. Okay, listen. You have to listen to the presentation. Okay. I can't. I can't. You didn't stop. I can't. Okay. That's it. Okay. So, um, and I didn't make any excuses at that time. So I said it was going to happen no matter what. I envisioned myself being a diamond coach. I made a team page. I started to host my team calls. Um, even though my team was, you know, two working coaches at the time. Um, and I believed it would happen. I knew it was going to happen no matter what. Um, and, you know, I think that I believe so strongly in the power of positive thinking and the power that your thoughts create your actions. Um, so a book that I've read um, that I think is like the best PD ever is called Conversations with God. Um, it's not very spiritual if you're not a super spiritual person. I know the title has God in it, but it's more so about just the power of, you know, that, just that, your thoughts create your actions and like how, how much you can create just by the power of positive thinking. So the next thing I did was I followed the rules. So by nature, I'm a rule follower. Um, I am someone that gets extremely anxious if I do anything that is not um, by the rules or by the book. And that might surprise some people because I'm kind of crazy, kind of goofy, um, but I hate breaking rules. That's just me. So when I joined the Dash for Diamond group, um, it had specific requirements and I followed through on every single one of them every single day. 
I made that group my priority and we're all guys, we're all in a million groups, but I made that my priority because that was my goal. Um, and I tried to have my name on this board every single day as completing both of the, you know, requirements for the photo a day challenge, as well as, um, tracking my business. So inviting. Um, so I basically, what I want to say is that I invited like a diamond coach. I invited more than I ever have before in my business. Um, and I realized through talking to my team is that inviting is really hard for people. Um, and I actually told Sarah the other day and I said, you know, that inviting, unfortunately, you know, I, I said, I don't want this to sound um, like I'm not being sympathetic to my team, but my team's having a lot of trouble with inviting and they're, they're finding that very hard for them. And I, I said to Sarah, inviting was never hard for me. Now, did I do it wrong in the beginning? Am I probably still doing things wrong now? Absolutely. But what I tried to do was I revisited my inviting methods. So I really started utilizing Instagram more um, and using the millionaire school script for Instagram, as well as I created my own version of the Anita script. And so if you guys don't know, the Anita Myron script is like for signing on discount coaches. Um, and basically she kind of says, you know, okay, like I'm so glad, you know, once you have someone ready to sign up and there's two options for you and sort of lays out the two options. And um, I think I really like kind of came into my own. I came to like this realization that I don't have to do, you know, everything that other people are doing, you know? So the script, I think the script was great, but there were some things in it that I wanted to tweak. Um, and so I did. And um, if you, if you would like me to share my Christine script has a hundred percent success rate. Just saying. Um, and so the next thing I did was prioritizing. So I made my business first because I wanted to. Um, and, and that's it because I wanted to. Um, I didn't, you know, I don't wake up and say, I have to do this. You know, um, I wake, woke up every day in October and said, I wanted to do this. Right. And I had to make sacrifices, but I was willing to do so because I had this goal. So for example, I usually take time off from coaching on the weekends. Um, and I did not do that during the month of October. So this is true for kind of any sort of, you know, if you're in corporate work and you're trying for a promotion, you know, sometimes you work extra hours and that's just how it works. So I kind of tried to see this as the same, um, and really just put in that extra time because more time devoted to my business meant more invites that I sent. So the role of my upline. So, um, during the push for, for diamond, um, basically I'd talk to Sarah all day, every day. Okay. Sit down. Please. Um, we made a plan and we had actionable items daily. So basically we had a plan A, B, C, D. Um, I think we only got to B, which is good. I'm glad for that. But, you know, it was every day it was, okay, if this doesn't work out, then we're going to do this. And if this doesn't work out, then we're going to do this. And I have Sarah to thank for being there for me all day, every day, 24 seven. I mean, I was up at, I usually wake up at five and I do my power hour five to six before my baby wakes up and before I go to work. Um, but during October I was up at four and I was up at four just because I was thinking about, I was dreaming about it. It was like, it was just, I couldn't sleep thinking about, you know, hitting my goal. Um, April helped me out. So, um, she gave my working coaches a kind of pep talk. Um, and everyone in my upline was just, you know, just there for me and supporting me. And it made a huge, a huge, um, difference in in making the promotion. So the final push, um, towards the kind of the end of the month, um, I think the thing that I did that was super successful, um, that Sarah actually suggested I do was I kind of laid it all on the line for my coaches and I was real with them. I told them that this was my goal and I needed their help. But at the same time, I tried to kind of mentor them one-on-one -on -one about what hitting Emerald rank meant for their business. Um, so I didn't want, you know, because it's not, it's not all about me. I didn't want it to be all about me, but the reality of it was, is that I did need their help. Um, and, you know, watching them grow has been, has helped me to grow. Um, and the other thing was I didn't get discouraged. So there were various things that happened throughout the month of October. The, the 
probably the biggest one is that two of my coaches hit Emerald and I had all of my eight personally sponsored coaches um, ready and active, but they were on the same leg. And I think that um, in that situation, anybody pushing for diamond might have been upset and might have, you know, I think I, I questioned it for a little bit like, oh, you know, I wish I would have done this differently or that differently. But I didn't get discouraged. I think once you start getting discouraged, it's a bad kind of path that you can put yourself on. And I just kind of said, you know what, I'm going to keep pushing. And it was the final push. And so we went to plan B and I, you Mom. know, made it happen. Mom. So um, in the end, I thought that Mom. Diamond would be the kind of be all And it's not. So the feeling of hitting diamond for me, yes, can you, can you hear me now? Hold. I can hear. <laughs> oh, you can? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, I'll take the headphones out. Baby is messing my up. So, so I thought that hitting diamond was going to be kind of the be all end all. Um, once I hit diamond, I was going to feel great. And I think it was kind of a weird feeling. Um, the feeling was, a, it was relief because I was literally working my ass off all month. Um, so it was a huge relief because, you know, I had set the goal and I hit the goal, but then I started to dream bigger and to say, um, okay, I need to make these certain plans. So the first plan I made with Sarah was that my plan is I never want to lose my rank, right? So my short even shorter term goal than this one listed here is that this month in November, I want to add eight more personally sponsored coaches. So I want to add four more to each leg and I want to keep adding and um, keep growing. My short term goal that I made for myself is that I'd like to be two star qualifying by February 31st of next year. And my long term big um, big goals are to be a premier and elite coach, to have financial freedom and to be a beach body millionaire. And I don't say those things. Um, they seem crazy probably to some of you. And I, I'm not saying them like, Oh, you know, everybody wants to be a beach body millionaire. Like I really, really want that to be my goal. Like my goal is to stand up in the fancy dress, um, you know, on the stage at summit and, um, I really want those things for myself. So I think that hitting, hitting diamond just kind of opened those doors for me. Um, and just kind of everything that I put my mind to for the whole month. Um, it was, so like I said, it was a, it was a good feeling, but I think. I can't hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, no, so that's really it. I think that's all I had. Um, if anybody had any questions, I don't have the chat up. Um, I think we were all just talking about you being amazing and that we want the Christine script. <laughs> oh, I, I will provide it. I will provide it. So I tweaked it for a couple of reasons. Actually, I talked to Zach about this, Sarah, like forever ago. And Zach didn't like the fact that she talks about um, – canceling your Shakeology and how easy it was to do that because he's like, oh, that's so good. So I kind of took some of his advice and I just tweaked it around, but I can certainly share that. No problem. But that's it. That's all I got. We're a little gooey bear. <laughs> She's so cute. Um, how about we'll just leave questions until after um, Dakota does hers and then you guys can just tag team um, that. So. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So thank you, Christine. That was mm -hmm. awesome. So, so, yeah, good job, girl. Um, okay. so go ahead, Dakota, give us your nuggets and then we'll, we'll um, answer any questions. Sounds good. Um, there are a lot of similarities and that's probably for a good reason. Um, for those of you who don't know, or you probably know from this call kind of being put out there, but Christine is my success partner, both early morning people, um, we found out we had a lot in common, so it's been really helpful, and we've, um, along with our uplines, been in contact, I would say, every day, probably, since close to the beginning of the month, so that has been very helpful. If you don't have a success partner, get matched up with one, and if the first one doesn't work out, that's okay, too. I went through a couple. Um, 
I talked a little bit, and as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm thinking to myself, there were a couple of things over the month of October that really, I would say, were turning points. And then I kind of, I, I very much am a person who, when I start and something starts going well and I start to have more confidence in myself, I guess intuitively, it makes sense that I kind of keep going and build on that momentum. And I was very fortunate to have a couple of big things and realizations, revelations throughout the month. So it was good. There are four main things I'm going to talk about. They're not revolutionary, but I think throughout this process, I've really had to remind myself of them every single day. Um, The first one is representative of one of those turning points that I had, and it's try something new. And I think we all do that just about every day, whether it's just tweaking the way that we're reaching out to people or stepping outside of our comfort zone. But for me, this was a big one. Um, To give you just a tiny bit of background, I came from a bodybuilding background, spent all my days in the gym and hadn't really dabbled too much. I had experience with T25 and P90X and those common programs that have been around a little bit longer. But otherwise, I was going to the gym. Uh, no chance of an at-home workout. And so it was stepping outside of my comfort zone a little bit when I decided to do this, but I took it and ran with it. It was a saving grace. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, But I still did my gym workouts for quite a while going into this. And um, I think it was at the beginning of October, I just decided that's enough. If I want to make this business work for me and really pour my heart and soul into it, then I need to do something that I am incredibly uncomfortable with and quit my gym membership. Um, So that's what I did. It was scary. It's been good. I think I did a week or two of sampling all the programs that I could get my little hands on, on the Beachbody On Demand, um, because I was familiar with some of them. But when I got questions about other ones, I didn't like having to always depend on other people for those answers. So I kind of dabbled here and there and learned as much as I possibly could going into this so I could genuinely match people up with their interests and, and what they wanted out of a program. So that was really scary. Number one, try something new. Uh, number two, not revolutionary either. Um, be comfortable asking questions. I think that it's such a revolving door when we come on to teams that it is, we all know it's easy to get overwhelmed. Um, and we think to ourselves, that's probably been asked and we dig through and maybe we don't find it. Um, and I think all of our upline coaches want us to have made an effort to find those things. And, and I don't necessarily consider myself too prideful to ask questions, but I really, I'm not comfortable. I always feel like I'm bothering somebody. I always feel like I'm inconveniencing somebody by asking, but just having group chats available and reaching out, um, asking any question I had and, and getting clarification if I needed it made me feel far more confident. And then I felt better talking to people because maybe I'd asked the question or even asked it twice. Um, and then I felt more comfortable just having those conversations. And speaking of being uncomfortable, um, this month I actually finished the millionaire school too. It was a big week. I went out to a conference and I, uh, first off, sitting at the conference that I'm supposed to be applying to my full-time job, I've been taking notes and writing things out for Beachbody. Um, and it was really great. Uh, one of the, I, it was about four hours away. So I listened to the millionaire school. Um, on the way there and I was getting close to the end and the last two modules were amazing I listened to them again on my way home but one of the items was to um, write out a hundred item bucket list and we all know it's like when we're listening to our personal development and they're like stop now and take these notes or stop now and write out a hundred item list and I was like yeah yeah I just want to get to the end But I did that actually during one of the conference sessions that didn't appeal to me. And it was hard. And I got to, I struggled at around 20 to 25 items. And then I got to 50 and they just kept coming. And I think what changed in my mind was that I was no longer inhibiting myself. I'm like, well, why? You know, you can't help but think to yourself, I really want to do that or I want to make that a reality. But I probably never will. So I'm not going to put that down. So I got rid of that way of thinking. 
made my whole bucket list this whole time. I'm like, Tanner, you have to finish the mil- the millionaire school. It's amazing. You're going to go crazy at the end. And then I'm like, but wait, because a small part of me feels like I died and I have nothing left to live for because there's no more millionaire school. Um, so I wrote on the bucket list and I actually got to like 110 or something and continuously I'm adding to that. So every day I'm trying to be conscious of that, get it out of my own way and realize that I can do these things. But then the part that comes in where I'm making myself uncomfortable is that I decided um, along with that bucket list and some of the items on it, I was going to share in, I was going to go live on Facebook. I thought about just doing it with my team page that I was just working on creating. But then I decided to do it on my personal page and I went live with my five-year vision and some of those items on there. And I didn't want anyone to know those things because then someone's going to hold me accountable. And part of me just really didn't know if I could make those things a reality. But I got a lot of interaction and it's amazing the people that come out of the woodwork, I feel like, to support you in those situations or express some of their own struggles. And then that's a perfect opportunity to share with them our opportunity because in reality, that's something, like I said, that's been a saving grace for me. Um, one of the, the funny things that I chose to put my video on the way out to Fargo, I got so amped up over the millionaire school that I called my mom and I'm like, what's one thing uh, that you have on your bucket list? One thing you want to do, but you just never thought would be possible. And she kind of, I don't know, she gave me some lame thing at first. I'm like, no, that's something that you feel comfortable saying. Pick something else, something bigger, something better. And I shared that too. And I think that was almost a turning point for my mom too. She's been tossing around the idea of, of a cha- participating in a challenge for a while. And she's like, wow, you're really passionate about this. You believe in this and I want to try this. Now she's doing this challenge and getting up at 4 a.m. every single day to work out. My mom sticks with nothing, by the way. So for her to be five days into this and sticking with it is huge. And she's trying to tell me that she's going to have amazing transformation pictures or progress photos in case she ever decides that that she wants to work the business. So that's been awesome to me. Um, just seeing that my belief in myself and passion for what we're all trying to do here is, is definitely maybe carrying over to other people. And had I not put myself out there and gotten uncomfortable that those things wouldn't be happening. So whether it's progress pictures or conversations or, you know, being up front with your coaches, like Christine talked about, that's one of the things I did during the final push to um, was just have that conversation. Here's what I need from you. You guys have been amazing. And without you, I wouldn't be here. But I need your help a little bit more. Um, I just want to push to that next step. And then even after um, reaching that point or reaching my goal, definitely following up with them and saying, like, thank you. You helped me accomplish everything that I needed to do to meet this goal. But right now we need to be in communication with one another. Um, and it's important that you let me know if you're thinking about changing anything or canceling anything. And I'm here for you every step of the way. Um, just like Christine did, I had little sticky notes that said, I am diamond by October 31st everywhere on my computer, on my bathroom mirror, on my vision board here, um, by my bed. It was just ridiculous. But I saw that every day and I'm like, how disappointed am I going to be in myself if I don't reach that? Um, in the role of my upline, like I said, we, we had all talked pretty much every day throughout the month. But even prior to that, because my initial date was October 1st that I wanted to secure it by. Um, so Tanner and I talked and she asked me, you know, what can I do for you? And we agreed that we would touch base every so often. And I had a reminder on my phone, what is this week looking at like this type of thing? Um, so I guess my biggest thing was then I didn't get discouraged when I didn't make that first goal. It pushed me to work harder. Um, and that plays into my uh, fourth point here. Just be consistent, be persistent. I started thinking about myself in terms of taking the advice that I give. So yes, I'm a coach, but what do I tell my challengers? I give a little bit of tough love if one of my challengers comes to me and says, this isn't working. Um, And I'm like, okay, well, let's revisit what you're doing. And then after 
minutes upon minutes of conversation and kind of picking apart all of their habits, they tell me, yeah, their eating is perfect. They're getting in their workouts, but they're not going to change the amount that they drink on the weekends. Okay, there we have a big problem. And so I can't sit here and say, I didn't get diamond and that's that if I'm not putting it in everything I have. So that's one thing. I just pushed aside the barriers and what I thought I could fit in. It is so easy for me to fall back on that. I have a full-time job and I just can't fit it in. So when I got to the end of the millionaire school, I had told Tanner, um, I'm going to put in four hours. I'm going to start my stopwatch and put in four hours outside of my outside of my full-time job and to be honest after I got there and after I reached the goal it's been more like six some days eight because just exactly like Christine said this isn't something I have to do to get there and getting there has only made me want to push harder um but it's something that I want to do like when I'm done with my work day I feel like just the positive support and, and how uplifting everyone is and encouraging is just what you need at the end of the day, even if it's a crappy day, to put you in a better mood. And so reaching out to people, knowing that um, if they choose to take advantage of the opportunity, you have it there and you're sharing and doing that consistently. So I will move heaven and earth before I miss a power hour these days. And I started to realize that that's something that's different than when I first started. If I couldn't do it one day, I just didn't and life went on, but I wasn't getting to my goals. So just to recap, um, try something new for me. I tried to make that as big as possible and kind of played into the next one too. do something uncomfortable and be uncomfortable on a regular basis ask questions. Don't be afraid to do that and be consistent. That's what we share all the time with our challengers. And I think overall what that boiled down to for me was I needed to stop making excuses. I needed to stop saying that I couldn't be a product of the product 100% because I wanted to do my gym workouts. And I couldn't say that I have a full-time job, so it's not reasonable for me to devote the amount of time that I needed to to become diamond and it wasn't reasonable to say oh I forgot to post that type of thing I put reminders in my phone I made um, little sticky notes about that too I did kind of a brain dump every day when I woke up in the morning got everything on paper and slowly checked those things off and that's what worked I mean I think it's important that as I say these things and, and being consistent that I'm learning every day and this is hard when you're new in this business we've all been there and we all know this but it's hard not to take those things personally but if I'm being consistent and I'm devoting a hundred percent of what I have to give every single day then it's nothing for me to just be like okay someone told me no or 50 people told me no that day because I know that I've given all that I have to give so overall all of those things play back into just not making any excuses we do everything we do for a reason. We go to school because we want a degree. Um, we make time for our families because they're important to us. And I think this has to fit in there somewhere. You chose to take advantage of this opportunity, as did I, because we felt strongly about it. So don't let that passion fade and don't take those no's personally. Those were big things that I had to tell myself. Share, get uncomfortable. I just shared part of my story the other day that kind of tied some of these things together and I think it's uncomfortable. I think it's scary, but those are the ones that I get the most interaction on. And ultimately that's what's helped me get there. So that's it. I think I rambled long enough. I love it. Um, what questions do you guys have for Dakota and Christine for your goals? Um, you know, t tips on hitting diamond or um, anything that maybe you might feel like they might connect with you more um, uh, being closer to, you know, where you are in your business. Sometimes I feel like um, just picking somebody else's brain with the same question can get a different answer that might help you better. So um, what questions do you have for them? The other thing too, can you guys hear me okay? Yep. The other thing that we should mention as a duo together is just like about how important having a success partner is and like the importance of it being someone that's very much like you, has the same goals as you, you know, we both work full time and 
like we've been in a chat with both of our uplines every day now. Um, like Dakota said, for the past month, and we're continuing to do that, and we have fun, but it's also been super helpful because I've also modeled what Dakota was doing, um, and like we've bounced things off of each other and both of our uplines, and that's been super, super helpful too. Yeah, that's a good point. I can't stress um, that, like not feeling like you're bothering your upline. They will be excited to hear from you, I promise. <laughs> well, sure. And just to share, one of those things that I wanted to bring up, when I started to think outside the box a little bit, I came up with a challenge, actually for my coworkers who are pretty frequently complaining that they're not um, in shape or they're not comfortable working out or they can't um, hold out on certain foods, that type of thing. And I had always felt a little bit uncomfortable working in a fitness center setting with approaching them about beach body simply because I felt like I was kind of playing devil's advocate to what my full-time job is and saying, no, don't join the gym, work out at home. But I just kind of said, well, whatever, we'll see what happens. And I got, I think it ended up being like eight of them involved in a challenge at work. Um, so they all got challenge packs and it, it um, I print out little recipes and stuff for them and we do the same things that we would do in a challenge group. It's just more in person than on social media. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. So Brianna says, how do you choose a success partner? So actually our uplines matched us up. Um, they were basically like, you guys belong together. So I think um, reach out to your upline. Um, as well as, you know, just post in your team page. It's like match.com, looking for a success partner. <laughs> you know, here's what I like, and here's what my goals are. For sure. What do you think, Dakota? <laughs> yeah, I would say the same thing. And I think there are some things that you don't always think about. If I do a lot of my beach body work first thing in the morning, and I think that's important because I know that you're always there and up at the same time as me. And and able to talk if I do have questions. So it's like little things. And I don't think anyone's offended if your first one doesn't work out or you find that they're not a match or they kind of fall off. I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, I see another question there. Question. Um, okay. So what things will you make sure your coaches do if they don't have four hours a day to work? So I would say a at least a dedicated power hour. Um, even if it's a power half hour, which I think I've shared a little bit with my team. Um, I, you know, I think that you, you know, you find time to make it work. If you can find at least an hour a day, you can work this business and I guarantee you, you can be a diamond coach. What do you think, Dakota? <laughs> I would agree with that. I think actually for two of my coaches who also work full time, um, we sat down and figured out where they could get that time from. What can they take away um, in order to get that time? And right at first, I said, while you're getting used to it and while you're making this transition, maybe you do a half an hour in the morning and a half an hour at night, or if you have a half an hour, 10 minutes over lunch. Um, but for me, I really think within that power hour, uh, reaching out to people, having those conversations so um, one of those people, I said, I want you to have five conversations today and um, screenshot me some of the things. And even if you feel comfortable with what you're saying, then still screenshot it to me and I'll let you know whether I think that's good or we can work on it together and figure out where to go. So having conversations would be my most important thing. Okay. Um, Kelly says, do you send a, I'm laughing because we just talked about this today, me and Dakota. Do you send a certain video that describes coaching to people a little more or do you use a script? Um, so Dakota, you use your uplines video, right? I made that one one day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just asked in our team page who wanted to be involved in the video and then I had them all send me like what does coaching mean to you or what has it done for you and then edited that in iMovie. So my video is like eight or nine minutes maybe which is probably a little long for what I would like to send but I think I'll keep it a while because it took me a while to edit so. No I think that that's great. I need to do that. Um, 
Yeah, can you share that in our team page, Dakota, so you can, so people can kind of see how you did that? And Tanner has one as well um, that she did. Uh, that's really great too. So share that so that other people can take a look. Because honestly, you can edit it with iMovie. Like people can take a video from their phone, email it, text it to you, and then you can edit it with iMovie on your phone. That's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been stalking everyone's videos. Shameless. I stalked yours too, April, and yours, Tanner. <laughs> I need to get ideas. <laughs> yeah, I made like a quick six minute one. Um, and I actually ha just recently got my coaches to send me quick videos. So I just have to send my part over and then I have somebody um, editing. But yeah, at the diamond retreat, we are going to actually do that um, kind of as a the gift to get it professionally done one that you can be. Uh, in. So pretty cool. <clears throat> Um, any other questions for uh, Christina? This was awesome, guys. You did so great. Thank you. Christina and Dakota, I have a question for you, ladies. Okay. Um, so obviously, now that you're Diamond, uh, that means you have some coaches uh, who have hit Emerald, which means they are working the business. What are you guys doing to create um, successful coaches underneath you, people who can emulate what you're doing? You want to go, Christine, or should I? I can go. Um, so I'm trying to stay in close contact with my coaches, um, so through group chat, through the team page, um, through our calls, through live videos of me rambling to myself, then they are listening or hopefully catch the recording later. So I think just like trying to just keep in constant contact with them and see what they need. And it's been um, a crazy experience, like watching them succeed so well. Um, it's very, very humbling. Um, I think that one of my goals too is, you know, to eventually now um, as a diamond to maybe create some of my own training. Big goals. Sarah, I came up with that today, by the way. I didn't tell you yet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, surprise. <laughs> I would say a lot of the same things. I'm very much trying to be in contact with them as much as possible. Some I'm fortunate enough to see on a semi-regular basis, and that helps um, clarify certain things. But, yeah, just staying in contact with them as much as possible. Um, one thing I get a lot from people that are um, pushing for uh, Diamond is that they just get people um, either not responding or they constantly have people um, just giving them some kind of objection. So for those people that feel like they're really spinning their wheels and people are either not responding or um, they're just giving objection after objection, what advice would you give to them? So I think, um, you know, the people that I used to get really hung up on um, following up with people and continuing to follow up. And when you're in the push for diamond, you can get a little crazy about your follow ups. Like you just what I've learned is that you can't put your eggs in one basket, obviously, but you also like you want to recruit up as Sarah tells me like you don't want some some of these people that aren't answering you and that's hard that's hard for some new coaches I think to say I don't want you on my team um, but I think it, it's like any business you know you have to look at people and say like do I mesh with you um, maybe I don't want you you know and move on to the next and keep inviting just you know if you and the other thing I was telling my team too is like, you know, if you read go for no, like if you have that no goal, like if you have a yes goal, my yes goal is to hit success club six this week. And I talked to three people and I got three yeses, I would stop. But if I had a no goal of talking to 50 people this week, when I hit success club six, I wouldn't stop. So, um, and I think that that's, you know, it's scary for some people, but I think that it's just, you know, there will always be, there will always be people that need to be helped. And if that's the case, if you're hitting these dead ends, like I follow up with people three times, but don't take it personally. Um, you know, maybe you don't want them. That's my advice. I think that's a big thing, but also within 
you know, when I'm presented with that initial objection or maybe they give me three, they're not ready to do that. They're too busy and they don't have the money. I think we all know what that boils down to is they're just not confident in themselves and the fact that they have the ability to do it. So I'll be honest, <laughs> I think for some people, and I try to gauge their personality, obviously, um, but I think it makes me a little more relatable and, and a human when I get a little ballsy with them and I say, you know, oh, okay, you're struggling with money right now. Yeah, that's all the more reason to do this. I have that same issue, but I knew that if I didn't do something about it now, nothing was ever going to change. And that's not comfortable to say to some people. So definitely like gauge the conversation. But as I go along, definitely not taking it personally, like Christine said, but I don't know. Don't just leave it. If you feel like that person is going to be awesome, then don't just, don't just leave it hanging there. And don't just say, okay, thanks. Follow up with me when you think you're ready. Because we all know that's not ever going to happen. Yes, I like that. Like, be ballsy. Like, you know, call people out. Like, what is keeping you from signing up? Like, you know, you have these people that you've sent links to and then they're not signing up. Like, call them out. Be like, what's stopping you? Or, like, if somebody flat out is just like, no, I'm not interested, like, probably, you know, probe them. Why? Always. And this isn't, I mean, we all know we don't want to leave the conversation at, well, let me think about it. And so this isn't revolutionary either, but if that's how it's left and I genuinely feel like they might come back given the opportunity to look things over, never, never, ever will I allow them to say, okay, I'll reach back out to you when I've watched. I'm like, okay, well, how long do you think it's going to take you to watch the video or give it some thought? Because I like to get it on my calendar. Our team is growing really fast. I want to make sure we touch base again. Um, when, when do you think I can follow up with you? And we get a date and a time, and then I follow through on that. It's not leaving it up to them. I love that. Um, yeah, and Sarah just says, even if you have zero coaches, say that. Like, fake it till you make it, because people don't know how many people you have on your team. And when you come across as successful and, like, Hey, I, I mean, we got to get this rolling or else, I mean, I have applicants coming in and I only have, you know, I really can only take five or, you know, 10, whatever you want to say your number is coaches, because I want to give you my one-on-one -on -one time. So, you know, let me know if this is for you. And when people are like, when you're putting them and you're saying, I'm, this train is leaving with or without you, people want to be on board versus like, I'll do anything. Can I pay you $20 if you sign up tonight? You know, they're like, uh, okay. Like they, people yeah. can smell like sense the, um, desperation. And so when you have this mindset, like, okay, take it or leave it. <laughs> you know, our group starts on our training starts on this date or our challenge group starts on this date. And I've got three spots. So you can let me know, but I, I, you have to let me know by this date. You know, when you create urgency and you let people know, like, if you don't, if you pass this up, somebody else is going to take it. They're going to be like, well, what is this again? You know, <laughs> so. <clears throat> um, Sarah says, last week, someone asked me how much money a coach makes on average. And I said, it really varies by person, but my plan is to retire my husband by the time he's 35, if that puts it in perspective for you at all. And yeah, that's a great way. Cause you don't want to say money. You don't want to say, Oh, well, you know, um, you know, for me, I think I made about $300 my first month as a coach, but I mean, I can't say that everybody's going to make that. I also had a girl that gave me like six referrals my first month as a coach. So, you know, I, I can't say that you'll make this or you'll make that. I don't tell people a number. I don't tell people what I make because I hustled my ass off for three years. So no, I can't guarantee that you'll want it and you'll, you'll make that. And you don't want to set up, um, expectations that, you know, maybe they won't hit and you don't want to, you know, promise anything because then they might not hit that $300 in the first month. And then they're like, well, I thought I was going to make $300 somehow. Um, so, and then also, I mean, the, I think it's the Eric Worre six question close where he says, you can also kind of dig into that. And he talks about that on millionaire school too, but basically, you know, you ask them when they're ready to start, start up, Hey, on a scale from one to 10, one being not interested at all. Obviously that's not you. You wouldn't be on this call with me right now. 10 being ready to sign up. Where would you say you're at? And if they're like a six or above, that's good. If they're a nine or a 10, just take that as them saying, I'm ready to do this. It's like, all right, cool. It sounds like you're, 
you know, ready to get started. Do you have any last minute questions for we, we do? And then, you know, from there you can say, uh, if they say, you know, a six or a seven, you can say, all right, so tell me this, um, you know, hypothetically, um, if you were to get with us, how many hours a, a week would you be willing to dedicate to this business? You might say, oh, probably like five or six, uh, five to seven, you know, what do they say? Okay, totally doable. So, um, you know, tell me how much um, for, you, for it to be worth your while, um, about how much money would you be wanting to make a month? Uh, maybe like $200. Okay, so, uh, you know, how long, you know, are you willing to work that five to six hours a week to, to build to that, that income? Maybe like two or three months? Okay, so if I could show, show you how to work five to seven hours a week um, over the next two to three months, making $200 a month, would you be ready to get started with us? And how can they say no? They literally just told you that's exactly what they want to do. <laughs> um, so, you know, so that's also a great way to kind of, you know, seal the deal and then be like, yeah, like, okay, cool. Um, so what flavor Shakeology did you say you wanted? <laughs> you know, like just go right into it. And, and you're, you're literally signing them up before they can even think about um, what they're doing. So little tidbits like that are, is why PD is so important. It helps you go in with confidence and not think like, oh, I don't want to be too pushy. No, you're, you're just inviting them. And you know, it's, it's not for them. They're going to talk themselves out of it. And that's not somebody that, you know, you might even want. So if they're not ready to, to jump right then, you can follow up with them later. But those people that really want it, and you can just kind of go through that process and they're going to get started. Yes, PD, that is, I think that's a great point too, because when I was a new coach, like, and I didn't have the time to do something, that's what I left out. And that's the worst thing to leave out because you need to work on you first. And, uh, you know, as part of following the rules of Dash to Diamond, we read, you know, the 12 week year, I did Millionaire Club and I did Go For No. And so, I mean, I, I think that's a great point. And I also want to point out that the script that April just kind of gave is great to use after our like live what is coaching events. And if you haven't done a live what is coaching event, you need to because they're awesome. I've got some of my best coaches from saying like, where are you on a scale of one to 10? Yeah. And my coach, Jennifer, who I think her grandbaby is on now, not her, but Yay. she told me, you know, 10. And I'm like, what? Like, I didn't even know, you know, she was an awesome challenger, but I didn't even know she was remotely interested in coaching. So don't make the decision for people. Yeah, and also, like, don't be afraid. You have to invite. Like, you have to actually invite. Don't just show them something. Like, don't just invite invite them to the live event and then like, not be like, so you ready to get started? Just be like, you know, you have to invite them because half of them, they might think maybe, but maybe I can't do this. So you have to give them a, you know, I, you're going to be amazing in this. Are you ready to get started? If you're not saying that, then why do you even invite them? Like you are literally wait, waste, and you're wasting that momentum of them being excited right after that as well. So, all good stuff. Um, Sarah says you're here to tell them what you have to offer and collect a decision. Yeah, and this is so much of this stuff, guys, is really just coming so much from millionaire school, it really helps you with confidence and just saying, you know, in your mind before you might say like, Ooh, that sounds, you know, like ballsy to say, but yeah, it is. And that's how you get awesome. <laughs> and you, that's how, you know, you grow your team is you're not afraid and you don't give a crap about what people might think or what people might say. If they say no, cool. On to the next. Some will, some won't. So what? Yeah. So his team don't give a crap yes you guys did so awesome i'm so excited does anybody have any other questions or anything we can help you with okay um all right nicole i saw that you said that you needed another screenshot i took one while you were here does anybody else jump on late that they want to take a screenshot now that you're here i don't see anybody um Okay, so I just took one. You, you may or may not be paying attention, but I took one so I can send it to you. <laughs> you know. All right, well, thank you guys so much for hopping on. Thank you so much to Christine and Dakota. That was amazing, and I'm so proud of you guys. Um, to everybody else, um, like we said, you, you have until um, December to really push and diamond happen and be at our retreat, which will most likely be September 2017. We are nailing down the location most likely Florida and it's going to be awesome and uh honestly my favorite trip this year that 
it was diamond retreat. So I can't Woo-hoo. wait. It's going to be amazing. Um, yeah. Any, any last minute um, uh, thoughts about why they need to get to ta- uh, diamond retreat? See who was there? Molly, Tanner, Sarah. Where did Molly go? <laughs> All right, Tanner's dancing. So, okay, well, I'm going to stop the recording. And-